Uh, so uh, let's start with uh, Ukraine. I mean, it's it's pretty pretty crazy what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, the uh, Ukrainians have invaded Russia. Uh, uh, Ukrainian forces. We talked about this a little bit last week, but it's only developed and it's only gotten more substantial. Uh, the uh, Ukrainian forces have crossed the border, have invaded Russia with significant force, uh, and they have taken now, I, I think the last thing I saw was something like 100,000 square kilometers. I mean, that's a big territory. Uh, it, it's, it's uh, and um, yeah, 1,000, not 100,000, 1,000 square kilometers uh, in Russia's Kursk region. There's also uh, some indications that in the Bogrod, that is the uh, region just south of Kursk, uh, the Ukrainians have made some incursions over there as well. And they're just driving into Russia. They, they, you know, their troops are just, they're, they're, they're experiencing some resistance. Most of it they've overcome. Russia has been forced to reallocate its forces and bring some of the forces into Kursk, who were stationed uh, in uh, Ukraine. So they're actually pulling people from the front lines and pulling them north, uh, north towards Ukraine, uh, north towards Kursk. And uh, so uh, the Ukrainians are engaging in battle with uh, uh, troops that were before inside Ukrainian territory. Now they're actually fighting inside Russia. It, the whole thing is just crazy. This is massive humiliation of the Russian military, massive humiliation of Putin himself. Uh, this is uh, not going according to Putin's plan. Putin had no intention. And this is really, when one thinks about what is the strategy here of Ukrainians, what do they have to gain uh, from this action? I think the main thing they have to gain is humi you know, humiliating Putin. And, and creating this angst and uncertainty and surprise and confusion within the Russian, uh, on the Russian side. Uh, whether ultimately this is going to be used, uh, they're hoping to take this territory just in case Trump wins and they have to go to the negotiating table with Russia and they can trade Kursk for some of their areas back south. But that would mean they would now have to get entrenched in Kursk it would mean they'd have to fortify the place. They'd have to build uh, defensive uh, defensive lines. Is that really what they want to do? Uh, how far out? How much territory do they want in order to do that? Will they back out? Just you know, will they solidify a line somewhere? What exactly is the tactic? I don't know. But yeah, you can imagine they're taking territory so they win the negotiations that Trump will force everybody to participate in. Uh, the uh, the uh, Ukrainians have something to bargain with. They'll have uh, they'll have some Russian land to trade for the uh, Ukrainian land that the Russians are stealing from them. Uh, it, that is certainly a possibility, but it's 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 going to be a, it's not going to be simple. It's going to be difficult for them. Uh, other possibilities are just to distract the, the Russian forces and. Uh, pull them off of the uh, main line and maybe weaken the defensive posture of the Russians in Donetsk province or somewhere else, which would allow the Ukrainians to advance. Uh, hard to tell. Hard to tell if that's, uh, uh, if that's doable and, and uh, uh, how, much, how much can really be achieved uh, and uh, how many troops will be forced out and whether whether Ukraine can make any gains in in um, in the areas that uh, Russia is uh, is occupying, I, I just don't know. Uh, it it really is uh, it really is hard to tell. Um, what else? Um, other possibility is Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine actually. Okay. Uh, other possibilities are Ukraine uh, actually um, uh, moves uh, to encircle the Russian troops, uh, cut them off from behind, but that is fairly unlikely, I think, given that uh, we have a situation where uh, 
it, it's fairly unlikely given how far north this incursion has happened. Kursk is pretty far from where the Russian troops actually are. So I find it hard to believe that they will be able to do uh, something like that. So, um, yeah, um, hard to really figure out exactly what the end game for the Ukrainians is. Uh, certainly uh, a negotiating tactic certainly puts them in a position where they can, uh, where they can uh, negotiate, but it, it also it, it extends their lines and it also moves Ukrainian troops away, let's say, from the Belarus border, or it moves Ukrainian troops away from a potential offensive operation to try to retake parts of, um, uh, retake parts of uh, Ukraine that have been occupied by the Russians. So a lot, a lot up in the air, really at this point, hard to tell exactly what the outcome is, uh, is going to be. But yeah, <laughs> Ukrainians are just marching into or driving into uh, into Russia, and uh, the Russians are not able to stop them. And how far they'll go, and again, exactly what the strategic purpose of all this, still hard to tell. Um, all right, so that is, uh, that is uh, uh, what we have in terms of... Um, uh, <laughs> in terms of Ukraine invading Russia. And we'll, we're, I'm, I'm gonna keep a close eye on this and, um, and, and give you some my insights to the extent I have any uh, on how it develops from here. It's, it's, it's a really, really, it's really, really fascinating uh, to watch what's going on there. Um, and, and I do think it's not going well. It's not going well for uh, Russia. Not going for, well for Ukraine either. So it's a real challenge.